Hi everybody, this is Steve Liebson, technology evangelist for Tensilica and frequent blogger for EDN. And today I'm here with my very good friend Jim Williams, and we have a treat for you. We are going to fix a 1970s era Tektronix oscilloscope, and this scope is a Tek 465, happens to belong to another good friend of mine, Tom Osborne, who's the guy who was responsible for getting HP into the calculator business. That's a different story. Right now we're going to just talk about oscilloscopes, which is something that Jim Williams is particularly into. Although you're a tube guy, right? I go both ways. <laughs> <laughs> You've got some tube tech I'm getting stuff. liberal in my old age. You're getting a <laughs> solid state. <laughs> but before we get into that, the reason that we're standing here, and we happen to be in Jim Williams' living room, is because of this thing behind us. You're not going to guess what it is. I'm going to let Jim Williams tell you what this is, because this is a great story. This thing behind me, this big rectangle full of circuit boards, is a Minuteman 1 ICBM flight computer, which was used to guide the Minuteman 1 missile <clears throat> to its target. And thankfully, it's here, because if it had guided a Minuteman to its target, it wouldn't be here, and we might not be here either. The interesting thing about this machine, which was designed in the late 50s and became operational in 1960 or 61, it's a 4K machine. All the memory is there on the disk. That's all it took, and it's still all it takes to get a bird from one point on the earth to the other to where it's going. It should take less now with GPS, right? <clears throat> They still fly inertial because they don't trust GPS because it might go away <laughs> if things get rough. Okay. This was a 4K machine. I think the clock ran around a megahertz if I remember right. It's entirely discrete. There's no ICs in the machine at all. There's full of diagrams and discrete flip-flops. This is a disk motor. The big transistors on the heat sinks delineate power supply and gyro and accelerometer electronics. And you actually programmed one of these at MIT, didn't you? When the Air Force got rid of the Minuteman 1, they merged up the Minutemans in the 70s, they made the Minuteman computers available to university researchers who were working on government money, and we got one. And that's when our PDP-11 was 50,000 bucks. So this was a very welcome addition to our lab. We interfaced it to a teletype and used it as a process control computer. <laughs> to give you a feeling for how far computer technology has come, which I'm sure you're all bored silly of hearing, but I'll give it to you again. This machine in 1960 was $239,000, back when a quarter million dollars was a quarter million dollars. Now this is less than a buck on a piece of silicon. Now this is less than a buck on a piece of silicon. So things have come a long way, but a piece of silicon for a buck wouldn't look very good on my living room wall. <laughs> well, so that's enough for the old computer technology. Now we're going to move ahead 10 or 20 years, and we're going to talk about tech scopes. But to do that, we're going to go upstairs to Jim's lab. So we'll see you in a second. So go ahead and tell the story. It appears we have found a shorted tandem capacitor on the plus 15 volt rail on the trigger board. We didn't do it the way the manual probably tells us to do it if we bother to read the manual, which is to disconnect the connectors from boards one at a time till we unload the power supply. We just went around and looked for tandem. Dip tandem capacitors are notorious fill points in test equipment. And this one is reading zero ohms. So the next step is turn the scope on. Aha! Uh -huh. That's sweet. Bingo! Which we didn't have before. We didn't have sweet. We didn't have anything. It appears to be much happier. The question is, are we going to give Mr. Osborne a new tantalum capacitor gratis? <laughs> Considering what he did for the world, I guess we sort of have to. All right.
If we poke around in inventory here and look for something around 15 microfarads at 20 volts. It's not tantalum, but it'll do. This is for Tom Osborne. This is his reward for getting HP into the computation business. You don't need to start that up, you got an iron going. That's right. That's stage fright. You got stage fright. <laughs> Clean out the PC holes. Back when boards had PC holes. See, if Tom had shipped me down an iPod to fix, it probably wouldn't have gone this well. Because you couldn't get into it, and if you could get into it, there's no schematic. And even if there was a schematic, you couldn't possibly decipher it. And if you could decipher it, you wouldn't have the mechanical skills to do what I'm doing now. I'm some 64 pin PLCC surface mount part. But it's the troubleshooting is simplified because there's only one chip. So you know which one's got to be bad. Yeah, you just can't replace it. Yeah, well, that's true. Well, why would you? For a $150 iPod, you buy a new iPod. These, uh, these tech scopes, this tech 465, this was the workhorse for how long? Oh God! They got more than five years out of this. They did a, they did this version, the B version. This was the world standard delayed sweep dual trace scope. Right. For for a couple of decades, this was the workhorse tech scope, tech, Tektronix technician scope. In fact, I think this scope is the reason why HP got into digital scopes. As you just can't build an analog scope better than this one. Well, Tom, it doesn't do transcendental functions, it doesn't do floating point, but it does dual trace 100 megahertz now. It looks pretty good. So I'd say we got it. We're sorry, Tom, it's not a logic analyzer, but it'll have to do. 